necessarily a desktop. All right. In other words, that redirection went bad. Then that is, again, as you said, an example of a fallback. Because let's say, for example, I go to an, you know, I have an ancient web browser on my phone and it doesn't identify itself in the way that my page is expecting. I'll get directed to this page. I'll get directed to the full page. And this style sheet will apply because it's just there. And this media query will not apply. All right. Therefore, I'll be stuck with just the base, which is an okay situation, right? Because if the phone misidentified itself, and it's an old phone, and I somehow made it to the full site, even though I'm really on a mobile device, I don't want to do anything fancy. I just want the basic bare-bone styling, and that's what you're going to get from the base, because the first one will apply, and the second one won't. So let me try to play with the screen resolution here see what I can set it to. Right now it's 1,024 by that. Let's make it 800 by 600. I'll keep the changes. Now let's go to this page. Let's open up. again. So look what you get. So imagine this being a mobile device. All right. What do you get? You get just a very basic bare bones page. All right. And again, so how is this a fallback? This is a fallback because if a page is misidentified, it'll get the base, but then it will not get that second enhanced style sheet. So my strategy of progressive enhancements works, right? I could even do this, I suppose, maybe in a less dramatic way, if I did want to have different looks for a gigantic monitor versus a normal size monitor. I could do a similar thing. I could have three style sheets then. I could have the base, and I could have a medium, and then I could have a large, kind of as you stated. All right. But here I just did the two levels. I just did the very bare bone basic, and then I have my final version. Yeah, I, I saw in the book how it mentioned the, the 760s in terms of right. tablets. Right. I think right. 760 to be particular. Right. But yeah. Right. So anyhow, you see again the purpose of this. So in other words, this is what I'm talking about about mixing and matching the different techniques you, you, uh, that, that we talked about in this class. In other words, don't say to yourself, well, look, <clears throat> I'm redirecting them to a different mobile page, so I don't have to worry about responsive design. I don't have to worry about progressive enhancement. That's not true. All right? You still do that, again, as a fallback scenario. All right? You still put that kind of code in as a fallback scenario. Just in case, again, with the case of the, the user agent detection, just in case that doesn't work the way that we expect it to. All right? And someone with a phone hits the full version of the site, this is what they're going to see. Which, again, isn't elegant, but at least it works. Go ahead. So, um, do what we've been doing with media queries, except for instead of having one, one desktop and one mobile, you have... One is bare bone, and the other one is in case someone accidentally gets there. Um, how do I want? Yeah, uh, how how can I 
say this. Ultimately, it's up to you to decide, all right, what strategy you're going to take. But that's probably a pretty decent strategy. But that, that is what you just showed. That is what, we, what I just showed, yeah. All right. And so, again, I, I guess the bigger issue, again, is that I'm mixing and matching for the fallback reasons and for all that. And I'm not just assuming that, hey, I'm doing the user agent redirection. Okay, I know everyone's a, a full version of the site, so I don't have to worry about this progressive enhancement nonsense. All right. I do have to worry about it, and I do for two reasons. Again, one, so I can get some reusability with that base style sheet that has some certain parameters that I want true on all versions of the site. For example, you'll notice no matter what convoluted thing we go through, we're ending up with my right fonts, right? So in the full version, in the mobile version, even in the broken full version, we're getting my sans serif font, so I'm happy. All right. Now, this doesn't look as nice and spiffy as a mobile version we had here, but again, at least it works. People getting here are people where all bets are off, right? Their user agent said that they were on a full device, but they're not really. So, what do we do? Throw up our arms and give them the simplest site possible, something that, hey, if they can view HTML, they can view this. All right, go ahead. Now... This is a, a case where I'm on the mobile, but I accident, accidentally got right. to the full size. Now, uh, let's say that I have a, a full size page that has just tons of effects that I know full well are not going to work on the small guys. Is this a classic case with the base CSS where I could plug in those display none Yes. Characteristics with, because, for example, yes. let's say I have the world's largest, most complicated picture slider on the big guy, but as yeah. long as that div is mentioned in base with display none, right. I don't have to worry about all that behemoth just right. as a mess on the little You're right. In, in fact, let's go and look at this. Let's look at this page. What do we have? We have banner. We have some links. We have a paragraph. We have some ugly PHP errors, but no video, right? Okay. Let's view what the full page actually looks like. Let's go and reset the screen resolution. So now we're back to normal. So now when it gets to that page, we'll be seeing the real full version with both style sheets applied.
I'm going to reboot this guy. I'm not really sure why it's doing that. Still think it's a caching issue. I'm not really sure why um, clearing the history didn't do it, but um, that is sort of a, a issue in web development sometimes. Um, when you have a page on a server, um, if it thinks it's downloaded it recently, it may not actually ask the server for the page again. It, it may display what has previously been downloaded. And I believe that was kind of what was going on. So um, let's go and, and reboot this and, and, and see um, this should fix whatever issues we're running into. After we do this, we'll look at the style sheet. And uh, yeah, I, I found that that display none fascinating in terms of right. just in the, the pure responsive flex type page mm -hmm. of you know something literally going bye bye. Right. And I noticed going back and forth that it was still mentioned in basic just just for the sheer fact of don't show me. And so. And so I, I began to think in terms of, like I said, these complex pages where I don't want the nasty behemoth stuff just choking the tar out of the handout. Well, one thing you do have to worry, uh, uh, be concerned about is it is probably going to still download the code. It's okay. just not going to display it. So okay. if, it, you know, that that's one potential uh, consideration. Yeah, my, I guess... My set right now is, like I said, these picture sliders and carousels that are very uh, complicated in terms of moving parts. Uh, where I, maybe I will do the basic CSS, I might just want a more mm -hmm. simple uh, picture to right. take its place. Set the screen resolution right. This is driving me crazy. So we were looking at this page before. Anyhow, I'm not really sure what's going on with this. Because the credits are still sure displaying right. It must, I don't know, there must be some sort of caching that I'm missing. All right, let's look at the style sheet. If we do remember, there was no video, even though there was a video on the, on the full version. Let's view it in IE. We were viewing it right in IE. Notice again that there is in the full version a video there. Yet in the mobile version there wasn't. So let's look at the style sheets. Let's look at the, the base style sheet and let's look at the enhanced style sheet and see what we do. Um,
so it's a CSS. I have three CSS actually, the base, the enhanced, and the mobile. If I look at the base, it's very rudimentary. Um, the body, I give the fonts that I want. I get rid of the bullet points on my UL, my unordered list. I make the LIs display block. That's why the links, if you remember, when we visited this page, the links displayed horizontally. display horizontally and there's no bullet points. Why? Because um, I, I get rid of the list style type. All right. I give a color to the links. I set some padding. And again, the video I have displayed as none. So that's what you, to what you were speaking to, that if it's erroneously directed to the full page through my progressive enhancement, I start with a baseline of just some very basic styling and get, getting rid of the elements that I don't want to appear in the basic uh, styling. And then I will, with each subsequent style sheet that I apply, in my case I apply one more, I'll add those back in. So when I'm on a full version of it, we get the video. Then I make the images in the member section a width of 100%. Again, um, we talked about using relative size for uh, images uh, in the fallback. Let's look at the full style sheet now. The enhanced style sheet. Here's where I do the more extensive formatting. I um, you know, give the background image uh, to the page. I uh, position my things through floating. So I, I float that within a container so that as we go around, you know, it stays centered within the container. All right. I do some things with opacity, so some of the image uh, peeks through um, the paragraphs. And, well, one second, please. And uh, finally, I go and I display the video by making the, dis in the, in the base, the display was none. Here, I did make the display block, and so I display the video. Yeah, you had a question? Oh, uh, no, does that opacity translate to IE? Yep. Oh, it does because mm -hmm. I've well, seen an RGB A system for. Yeah, we're doing it. This is IE, and if you look close, oh. you can see. Oh, okay. No, that's good. You know that it does. Yeah. Work out. Well, you have to actually. Again, this is the portion of it that works for IE. This is a portion for everyone else. Ah, uh, okay. So we put two styles in. All right. Let's look at the actual index page itself. So we looked at the base style sheet, we looked at the enhanced style sheet. Now let's actually look at the full index itself. And the full index itself, we looked before. Here's our two style sheets. All right, and we talked about those. Uh, and we talked about why I'm still using a media query, even though allegedly this is the full version. I then have two little catches in here, one of which you're familiar with because we've done it before, and one of which you're not familiar with. So let's talk about uh, both of them. First of all, the second one is the one that you should already be familiar with. Page 62 option. Yeah, the page whatever option. <laughs> if you're on IE less than 9, 
and you're not on IE Mobile, gee, you're going to be ignoring the media query. So yeah, by the way, go and apply that enhanced style sheet. All right. So that one is what takes care of that quirk with IE. The second script is a script I downloaded uh, from uh, the, uh, the Google Code project. I, uh, there's a credit, I believe, uh, for it on the credits page. What this does is this helps with HTML5. Earlier versions of IE didn't know HTML5. Of course, because you know HTML5 was, probably wasn't written when some of those versions were around. All right. Other browsers are smart enough that if you just if you create a style rule for a tag that it doesn't know, Firefox will apply that style rule anyhow. All right. So if you you know if you use an HTML tag a five tag that Firefox doesn't recognize and you put a style rule on it, Firefox don't care. You want that thing to have that style? Go ahead, go for it. What this does is this fixes it so that IE works the same way. So that if you're using a version of IE that doesn't recognize certain HTML5 tags, this will allow you to apply styles to them anyhow. All right. So these two things should be kind of standard in this just to, to catch you know, um, IE. Notice I have most of the content in this and include files. Most of this page is structure. The rest of the stuff is include files. Why? Because I want little building blocks that I can use over again. All right? If I look at, let's go and open up the mobile index page. Notice that the difference between the mobile index page and the full index page the includes are the same. I want the same banner, right? I'm just styling it differently. I want the same overview, but on the full page I have a second overview. All right, so I, if you look in the full version of the site, there's three paragraphs, whereas in the mobile version there's only the one paragraph. This mitigates the issue of having duplicate code, okay? If we truly had to develop two complete different websites, that would be a big undertaking. But if we're clever about carving up our pages and putting them in include files, then we make our job a lot easier because we're not duplicating code and we're not, if you go and you need to change something, you can change it in one place and get that change reflected across the site. So again, there's still going to be more work doing two websites than doing one website. But it shouldn't be twice as much because you should be sharing some of the code and mitigating it. Now, we're just using some very, very basic PHP functionality, the include files. We're not doing anything fancy in PHP. You know, we're really just mainly using include files. But when you, uh, when your expertise with PHP uh, grows, you can share PHP functions, you can share database access, you can share any of these, this kind of code in the include files. So again, one of the keys to developing in this environment when you're thinking of a full version or a mobile version is thinking of chunking your code. All right? We chunked our code in terms of style sheets. I didn't just make a full style sheet. I made a base style sheet and an enhanced style sheet for all the reasons I gave before. I thought, gee, what's the most fundamental styles that I want applied everywhere? I'll put that in a style sheet, and then I'll enhance it using the pro progressive enhancement. All right? 
um, I went and carved up the pages into sections, the banner, the, uh, the, the, some of the content, some of the navigation, all right? And I put those in include files. So both of these pages point to the same include files. That's why I have that directory structure I have. Full and mobile are on the same level, and they're on the same level as the include. So they use this syntax to go up a level, go up a directory, then down to includes, and then pull the links over. All right. The other pages work the same. Let's look at, let's go to the members page. members page. Notice how that is organized in a two by two grid. If we go to the mobile version of it, you'll notice that they were all assigned in a row. Let's look at that code and see how that was accomplished. If we look at our CSS files, in the enhanced CSS file. Anything with a class of member, I float to the left. All right. And I give the image a width of 300 pixels, which is the size of the image. In the mobile version of it, I don't do anything. But in the base version of it, I style the image width as being 100%. All right. So, if we look at the include file for the images, for the members, you'll notice it's just four divs, one right after the other, each one having a class of member. All right. When the base 